In today's video, we will be talking about the general concepts regarding intangible assets. This is the first part of the intangible asset series. Before you proceed, support this channel by clicking the subscribe button down below and might as well hit the bell notification to be updated. Let's jump right into it. Pass 38 defines an intangible asset as an identifiable, non-monetary asset without physical substance. An intangible asset is identifiable if it is separable from the entity. This simply means that it can be sold, transferred, or exchanged. Also, an asset is identifiable if it arises from a contract, for instance, a franchise, or other legal rights. Aside from these criteria, the company must have control over the asset and restrict others from accessing the future economic benefits or FEB that it will produce. Clearly, we cannot consider the skill of employees arising from training cost as intangible asset because even if the business obtains the indirect benefit, it cannot control the future actions of its staff. And the same logic goes for market share or customer loyalty. Tangible asset is initially measured at cost. If it is acquired separately, the cost includes the purchase price as well as the import duties and non-refundable taxes net of trade discounts. Don't forget your directly attributable cost or DAX to prepare the asset for the intended use. Example of DAX would be your cost of testing. However, if the entity decides to defer payment beyond the normal credit terms, the cost is equal to the cash price equivalent. This is simply the down payment plus the present value of future cash payments. Interest expense is then recognized over the credit period. If the intangible asset is acquired in a business combination, cost is based on the fair value at the date of acquisition. If there is an active market, the quoted price of an identical asset serves as the most reliable evidence of fair value. Otherwise, price of a similar asset does the job. In fact, the fair value can be obtained by discounting the estimated future net cash flows from the asset. Meanwhile, airport landing rights or licenses to operate TV stations may be initially recorded at either the fair value or a nominal amount or zero plus your directly attributable expenditures. Intangible assets acquired through exchange are measured at fair value if the transaction has commercial substance. Otherwise, we use the book value of the asset given up. A transaction has commercial substance if the cash flows of the asset received differ significantly from the cash flows of the asset transferred. And lastly, for internally generated intangible assets, the cost is comprised of DAX, such as the cost to obtain the legal right. Now, let's focus on things that were internally produced. Under the standard, internally generated goodwill shall not be recognized as an asset. And the same thing goes for brands, mastheads, publishing titles, and customer lists. These items cannot be identified separately from the cost of developing business as a whole, but rather viewed as component of internally generated goodwill. Therefore, we expense them as incurred. Other items that are expensed include startup costs, like those incurred in organizing or pre-opening a business. Watch out also for inefficiencies such as initial operating losses. Cost of training, selling and promotional expenses, and even business reorganization and relocation cost. These are all expensed. How about subsequent expenditures? Guess what? These are expensed too, as these are costs likely to just maintain the future economic benefit embodied in the intangible asset. Rarely do we find such costs capitalized because in countless cases, it is impossible to determine whether the subsequent expenditure enhances the economic benefits. Subsequent measurement. The entity can choose between the cost model or the revaluation model. Under the cost model, the intangible asset is carried at cost. Less accumulated amortization, less accumulated impairment losses. The revaluation model actually has the same structure only that we use the revalued amount or the fair value of the asset in an active market. Amortization under both models depend on the useful life of the intangible asset. Only intangible assets with finite useful life is amortized, since it would not make sense allocating an amount over infinity. The useful life of an asset is indefinite when there is no foreseeable limit to the period 
over which the asset is expected to generate net cash flows. This is true especially if the entity can renew the right to the asset at a minimal cost. However, the useful life of assets arising from contract or legal right shall not exceed the period under the contract or legal right. Therefore, we use the shorter between the useful life and the legal life, whose li or the useful life is equal to the ICSI. How about the method? Well, it must reflect the pattern in which future economic benefits are to be consumed. In the absence of such, the straight line method is used. Meanwhile, the residual value is presumed zero unless a third party exists who is committed to buy the asset at the end of its useful life, or if an active market for the asset exists, allowing us to measure the residual value, and it is probable that there will be a market for the asset at the end of its useful life. The intangible asset is impaired regardless of its useful life. The difference lies in the frequency of testing. If the intangible's asset life is finite whenever there is an indication of impairment at the end of the reporting period. However, intangible assets with indefinite useful life are tested for impairment at least annually and when indication of impairment exists. Finally, this last aspect will dwell on the recognition. The intangible asset is eliminated from the balance sheet when it is disposed, with gain or loss arising from the difference between the net proceeds and the carrying amount. Or, when future economic benefits no longer exist, wala nang FEB. Feb Ibing? That's all the time we have. Thank you so much for watching this video. Learn from this video, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button down below for more refreshing content. See you in our next video.